This video is sponsored by Intel. Hey everyone, my name is Bob and welcome to the how of my why what how video series on Intel Arc GPUs. In this video, we'll be going over how to set up AV1 encoding for your streams and videos, whether you're using an A series card as your sole GPU or you're using an additional card like the A380 as a dedicated encoder. As well as setup, I'll be sharing some recommended bit rates for the resolutions that you stream at to better help you understand how to deliver the best balance of quality and viewer experience. Let's dive in. Okay, so I kind of lied there. We're not diving in, at least not right away, because there's a few things I want to talk to you about first. But because sometimes with these kind of videos, you just want answers. And since I'm such a nice guy, if you're looking for anything specific in the video, here are the times you can skip to to get the answers that you need. But before we discuss the setup of AV1 in OBS, especially if you've not pulled the trigger on a card that's capable of it yet, it's probably a good idea to talk about the requirements of these GPUs first. Regardless of which art card you decide to go with, you'll still need to make sure that you have Windows 10 or 11, at least a 10th gen or higher Intel CPU or competitor equivalent, and a motherboard that supports resizable bar. You'll need to make sure that you also have a free 16x PCIe slot. This will be the one that you currently use if you're replacing your current GPU, or an additional slot if you're adding a card like the A380 alongside your existing GPU. If you decide to go for the A750, you'll need a 600 watt plus power supply along with one 8-pin and one 6-pin PCIe power cable and make sure you have at least 8 gigabytes of system memory, with 16 gigs being the recommended amount. For something like the A380 though, you'll only need a 350 watt plus power supply and an 8 pin power connector, as well as 4 gigabytes of system memory, with the 8 gigabytes being the recommended amount. That's what you need to be able to run these cards, but now let's talk about what they'll give you in return. Both of the GPUs featured in this video series have 3 display ports and 1 HDMI. They also utilize Intel's AI-enhanced upscaling engine, XESS. AV1 encoding is also available across the entire product stack, and the A750 even has hardware-level ray tracing units, which is kind of amazing considering its price point. For the stat nerds among you looking for more data, I'll place some links in the description down below to some great deep dives and official testing videos. Now we've reached the part of the video where I get to say something a little bit unexpected, especially considering this series is sponsored by Intel. Because after spending some time with two different Intel Arc GPUs and testing out their features and benefits for creators, I'm actually recommending the cheaper A380. And the reason for this is pretty simple. Most creators that have PC builds likely already have a GPU that can manage their game. Gaming. If you don't, the A750 is an amazing option if you want to game, stream, and record all at the same time. But the A380 not only gives you access to AV1 encoding, but also provides you with the ability to offboard your streaming and recording from your main GPU, which means all that heavy lifting is going to be done by something that's only going to set you back. £130. Stack that up against what it could cost you to get the same results with a different brand, and you're likely saving yourself upwards of £350. Now, I'm assuming at this point you've paused the video and immediately gone and bought yourself an Arc GPU. So now we'll go through what you need to do once you've actually installed the card. First off, before you even boot the PC fully, access your BIOS menu and start up by spamming whatever key your motherboard manufacturer has set. This is usually done by pressing the delete key or something like F2 or F12. If you're unsure what key to use, a quick search online should be able to answer that question for you. When in BIOS, you'll need to search for the option to enable resizable bar. Again, this varies per motherboard, but generally you should be able to find it using the search function. Once you do, enable it, save your changes and exit. If your motherboard doesn't support resizable bar, be aware that you may face some potential performance issues. Once your PC is booted, head to your browser to grab the Intel Arc control software. To save you some time, I've put the links to the download page on Intel's website in the description down below. Once you've installed the software and confirmed any monitors that are plugged into the GPU are functioning correctly, it's time to start setting up the encoding. So, let's boot up OBS now and click on settings. Since YouTube is currently the only streaming platform that accepts AV1 as an ingest, even though it will transcode whatever you send it in AV1 to VP9, you'll need to set up your YouTube account under the Stream tab. The best way to do this is to connect your account via your browser. Once that's done, head to your Output tab, and to avoid introducing any unnecessary issues, set the Output mode to Simple. This way you can avoid a lot of the more advanced setup, and potentially, a lot of stress. The first thing you'll need to input is your video bitrate, which we'll actually talk about in a bit more detail shortly. So, use whatever bitrate you've been using up until now. Set your audio bitrate to 160, your video encoder to hardware QSV AV1, 
and your encoder preset to quality. If you feel like your encoder is struggling with the quality preset, feel free to swap to balanced to help take some of that load off. For recording, set your recording path to wherever you want to save your files on your PC. And depending on what quality you want to record alongside your streams, you might want to select one of the options from the quality dropdown. Although I wouldn't go above indistinguishable as you're likely not going to see any major impact in your footage by using lossless. That said, since AV1 encoding allows you to produce really high quality content even if you don't crank your bitrate all the way up, you might find that using the same as stream option is more than sufficient for your recordings. The best thing to do here is to test out what best works for you and your content before going live for the first time to get a better idea of your required settings. On the recording format dropdown, I always choose MKV as this recording format is basically invincible because it saves as it records. So even if your OBS crashes, you'll still have everything you recorded up until that point. Finally, select whether you want to enable replay buffer so you can click content directly on your PC. Now we've covered OBS setup, let's circle back to bit rates. One of the best things about AV1 is that compared to older codecs like H.264, which launched way back in 2004, is that you can lower your bit rate and still maintain the same level of quality. Whilst the best bit rate depends on exactly what you're streaming, as well as yours and your viewers' connections, generally around 4K works great for 1080p, 6K for 1440p, and 10 to 15K for 4K60. The most important thing during all of this setup is to make sure that this works for you. So be sure to make any tweaks that you need to best suit your needs. And that brings us to the end of this video series. Thank you so much for watching and a big thanks to Intel for sponsoring these videos. If you missed the first two videos in the series, make sure to check them both out here. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.